six essentials for the warrior. Today, most armed services have a six to 13 week period of what they term basic training. During that time, the recruits have a leader called a drill instructor. After this basic training, the young soldier or sailor begins to look and act differently. As you continue through this Bible, I pray that you will get in shape for more intense spiritual warfare. A timid, untrained army is no match for hell's terrorists. No, we must get into spiritual shape, pick up our armor, and go to the battlefront. David trained his 400 soldiers with the troop we find in Psalm 18, which contains six basic charges every word he needs to hear. Number one, get under authority, submission, Psalm 1827. The soldier must begin the day knowing how to obey orders. From the moment of arrival in boot camp, nothing belongs to the recruit anymore. His hair is cut, his clothing is selected for him, and his schedule is determined by his leaders. For a season, freedom is lost, submission is taught. It is essential to understand that putting the devil to flight requires submission to God. James 4, 7 tells us, Therefore submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hebrews 12, 1-2 gives the Christian his or her marching orders. Therefore, since we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Number two, get on fire for the cause, passion, Psalm 1828. The second goal of boot camp is to inspire the recruit to have a passion for the cause of the nation. All things being equal, the one with the most passion for the fight will win. In our struggle against the enemy, we must be on fire to win the souls of men for God's kingdom. Number three, be prepared for warfare. Discipline, Psalm 1828. God will enlighten his soldiers. We have been given the right armor and the right instructions. Every church must become a spiritual armory, preparing its people for the struggle against the darkness. Number four, believe you can win. Vision, Psalm 1829. Here the recruit confesses his faith. By the power of God, he can overcome the truth. With the strength of God, he can leap over a wall. The enemy's army and obstacles fall before the spiritual soldier who has faith. Number five, know your weapons. Power, Psalm 1830 through 32, 34. Notice first that God has a perfect battle plan. The word perfect means absolutely complete. We must fight according to his plan. Secondly, Yahweh has given us a sharp two-edged sword, his word. We must wield wow, this sword effectively if we are to live the victor's life. Furthermore, God grants us a shield of protection. Faith also, Yahweh exercises a gift to our hands to be strengthened to make war. We can use our bow of bronze to judge the enemy. Spiritual archers can shoot down the principalities in the heavens. Number six, go to the next level. Exodus, Psalm 1833. Boot camp moves us to the next level of battle. We can conquer the mountains before us. Our feet must be strong so we can walk with a sure foot. The feet of deer track, which means the rear foot will always land where the front foot leaves. Our God allows us to walk in his footsteps, tracking hard after him. David's manual here is Psalm 18, molded the 400 outcasts into a military machine that will take the kingdom. We too can go to the next level. We become informed and disciplined. Learn to know your enemy. Understand the battle. Equip yourself for the fight and walk in victory.